One of my most asked questions is, have you used Novel AI and is it any good? Should authors even take a look at that? And I will be answering that definitively and what I think you should use in this video. So stick around to the end so you can get a look at what I, my recommendations are. Let's get into it. All right, so this is Novel AI. You can find it at novelai.net. And this is another tool that often gets flown, floated around when people talk about AI, using AI for fiction writing. And it's one of those that kind of came up around the same time as PseudoWrite. It's been around for a little while. Um, but for some reason, it hasn't quite taken off as much as PseudoWrite has, for example. And we're going to examine a little bit why that is. And, and is it even worth looking at? So let's briefly go through their homepage here. And, you know, we can see there's a, some kind of interface. And here it explains about what it is. So it's a monthly subscription service for AI-assisted authorship, storytelling, virtual companionship, or simply a GPT-powered sandbox for your imagination. Um, so that sounds all right, right? And this is, by the way, the only reference that I was able to find about what language models it uses. So it appears to use GPT. It does not say whether it uses GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. So that's up in the air. Probably it uses both in different scenarios. Um, but so far this is sounding okay. Also, I will say the website design is pretty good. It's way better than PseudoWrites actually. Um, and then it also has image generation. I'll talk a little bit about image generation, but as you can kind of tell from these images, a lot of them are very anime focused. And I have learned from the research I did for this video that a lot of people are using novel AI because it had basically uncensored access to certain models. And I don't know if that's still the case anymore. They, they have probably fixed that by now. But essentially, people were using it to create, you know, not safe for work images, uh, which, <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. Um, so I give some examples of what this looks like. You can customize the editor. That sounds interesting. Take your writing anywhere. Uh, secure your writing. Yeah, the security is a big deal for them, I've kind of discovered. Um, this is kind of cool. You have these AI modules. These are basically... Uh, using a specifically trained model that in a particular author style like Arthur Conan Doyle, Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, etc. or around a specific theme like dark fantasy, dragons, Mars colonization. But I will say that having played around with these, it is no different than just asking ChatGPT to write in that person's style. They haven't really added anything unique or a value here, in my opinion. It's just kind of one of those cool little flashy gimmicks uh, to get people excited about it. But it's really no different than putting the author style in there yourself. So, yeah, a few more information here, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and then we get to the pricing. Now, the pricing, they do have a free tier, which gives you fit 100 free text generations, which is nice and generous for a free trial. Then they have $10 a month, $15 a month, and $25 a month. Um, and from what I was able to tell, there doesn't appear to be any major word limit with these. I honestly couldn't find a place that would tell me if they had a limitation. The main thing that gets bigger with each of these tiers is these tokens of memory, which means how far back can it remember and with the ten dollar a month that's three thousand tokens it's six thousand for the fifteen dollars a month and eight thousand for the twenty five dollars a month but honestly eight thousand is about what gpt4 has and so that's not really saying much given the fact that this is already more expensive than using gpt4 through chat gpt plus and eh, okay you got to give me something more than that novel ai so let's go ahead and log into this and see what it looks like on the inside all right so once you're in it'll give you a tutorial and then you can come to this dashboard and here's where you can have your stories you can start a new story um you can generate images here text to speech here some interesting things here i'm not really seeing anything super 
cohesive about the design. But I will say, Sudorite, although I love Sudorite, could maybe improve a few things about the design. Um, but we're just gonna go here and we're gonna hit New Story. And it gives us two options. We have the Storyteller and the Text Adventure. We're gonna do both. I'm gonna start with Storyteller. And then it says, enter your prompt here. Now, here's where it gets weird. Um, you think, oh, okay, it wants us to prompt it, right? So I could say, write a short story about a um, mermaid in the Arctic who wants to vacation in Bermuda. All right. And hit send. And it gives me something weird here. So um, this is actually not the kind of prompt that you would think of if we were writing this for um, ChatGPT or something else. What Novel AI does is it takes something that you have already written and then it continues that writing. So I'm just going to jump into Sudorite real quick to grab some text um, from Story Engine just so I have some. Okay, so we'll just take these first two paragraphs here and copy them. Just pretend I wrote that. And then now that we're at the end of this, we can hit send. And then it continues the story a little bit and we can then edit this, see to how we like it, hit send again, and it'll continue the story even further. So you can probably already see the big problem with this, at least if you are a novelist thinking about using novel AI for your book, is that there's no place to prompt this. We have no way of being able to tell it, I want it to do this, this, and this, and then have it write it a couple of paragraphs for you to do. The only way you can write with novel AI is to write a little bit yourself, then ask it to write a few more sentences, then you fix those sentences up, then ask it to write a few more sentences, and it has no idea where you wanna go with this, which means most of those sentences are going to be absolute crap. And so I really had a hard time uh, dealing with this and uh, like I couldn't believe that this was the case and so um, I just started looking it into it some more now there 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 are a few interesting things about this um, there for instance there are all these advanced settings so you can really fine-tune what the model does for you uh, but if you look through some of the things that you could do here a lot of this 99% of it is going to go way over the user's head Phrase bias, weigh the AI's chance of generating certain words or phrases. Like most people aren't really going to know what that, like what does that actually do for them? What's the value that they get out of that? Um, there's so many things here that are really just for the tech nerds that really want full control over the output. But none of that really matters to me because I can't tell it what to do next. I, I you know, I, <laughs> I'm getting a little ranty here, but this is just essentially useless for an author who wants to create a specific book. Now, if you just want to write an interesting story and kind of see where it goes, that's fine, uh, but that's not what this is. Now, I will say the one thing that most people are interested in when they hear about this, um, this is jumping to this story here, is the fact that... Uh, Novel AI does have what they call a lore book. And you can access this down here at the bottom with this little button right here. It opens up the lore book and you can put entries here like character information and stuff and it'll know that and remember that. But the problem with that is that it actually isn't remembering everything. It will kind of scan through it and this is why having that extra amount of tokens for memory is important. So if you have the $25 a month tier, uh, you'll be able to remember more, including more of the lore book. Uh, but frankly, this kind of lore book, having your characters and everything here so it'll remember that, is overrated. 
because what you really want when creating a chapter in an AI tool is to be able to tell it what to do and you have to give it the context. Now, if you're looking at pseudo, right, if we come in here and looking at story engine, um, if we come all the way to the right, come on, let's go. All the way to the left, excuse me. Uh, we have all of this information about the synopsis, uh, the brain dump, the characters. So here, you can also input these characters. This is absolutely no different than what novel AI is doing. Um, the, they're using the same kind of process. They're just calling it the lore book to make it sound fa fancy. But essentially, it's just a list of characters and other things that you want the AI to remember, which you can absolutely do the exact same thing in PseudoWrite in this section. But ultimately, that isn't what is going to make good output with your text. You want to be able to tell it what's going to happen in the chapter so it can then do that thing. And Novel AI has no way of doing that, even though it has the lore book. Um, there is nothing, in my opinion, that the lore book adds to this whole thing. So let's go back to the dashboard real quick before I wrap up this tutorial. Uh, or well, let's go and hit new story and then we'll come here to where it says text adventure. So we did storyteller where we're basically starting from scratch and we write a little bit and then it writes some more and then it, you know, you can keep going from there. The text adventure is a little bit different. And so we can add the prompt here. Let's go ahead and get some more of this text. Stick it in here. That's the prompt. And then you say, what would you like to do? I would like to leave the hall. Oh, this is a ritual chamber. There are no other X's. I just stand there doing nothing. You stare at the altar and the lifeless body atop it, but your mind is there elsewhere. So this is a little different. This is a little bit more like a game. And honestly, I think that is more what novel AI is trying to do, is trying to be kind of an interacting ga interactive gaming experience where you're able to interact with the stories as you go along um, or just kind of see where a story goes. It is not... I repeat, it is not a tool for writing novels. And I think the name Novel AI is actually super deceptive, right? It's super deceptive because it's telling us that this is a thing for novels, but really there's nothing here that would help you write a novel. Absolutely nothing. And so as a novelist, the nerdy novelist, right? I cannot recommend novel AI in the slightest. It is absolutely unusable for me for writing novels. If you are a gamer and are interested in just kind of playing around with the story and, and interacting with it in that way, uh, perhaps you are an RPG gamer and you want to actually use a tool like this, uh, then maybe it will be interesting to you. I know there are other tools out there that will do it as well. And they honestly, just based on my feelings towards this tool and my initial interactions with it, I think other there are probably other tools that do a lot better. So you might want to look elsewhere for that as well. I personally cannot recommend this tool. And so I, I would recommend highly that you go and use PseudoWrite instead. Um, I have been showing you Story Engine a couple of times during this video. It is a much better tool for creating your novel. You can put everything you want here into this brain dump. Then it will generate a synopsis and then once you fix that up to be how you like it you can generate your characters fix those up to be how you like it generate your outline from that and then once you've fixed up every part of this outline to be what you want it to be you can then move on to the actual generation of your story beats and then full-on prose literally you can do this within an hour and um, be writing out chapters like thousands of words an hour uh, using this tool, even if you're doing it well and spending the time to make sure your story beats are, are solid. There's so much you can do with this tool and it's absolutely incredible. And so I highly recommend you do that. If you would rather uh, not pay for PseudoWrite or any of these tools, ChatGPT is also a good resource. And I recommend you check through some of my videos to see how you can write a novel with ChatGPT. And in the meantime, I will see you in the next video.